why don't you first start off by telling us what the question was that you started uh, the study off with? Okay, well that's exactly where we want to be starting, mm -hmm. is what was the question that we were trying to answer. And so what we uh, fundamentally were asking was, um, um, how does the effect of a low carbohydrate diet compare to the effect of balanced diets, which are the ones that are recommended, mm -hmm. in relation to weight loss? And then we also looked at some cardiovascular risk factors or heart disease risk factors like cholesterol levels and blood pressure, right. etc. And so what we were really uh, um, comparing was, or you could frame it in another way by saying, um, was there a difference or is there a difference in the effect mm -hmm. of these two diets on weight loss? And so that was where we started. And so we conducted um, searches in, a lot, in, a, in three of the, of the largest electronic databases of medical literature and scientific literature in the world. Um, our search yield was about 3,500 papers. Wow. So we spent a lot of time um, screening every single um, yield, you know, every single paper, and 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 eventually, over a process of time, um, you you um, get down to the ones that actually are answering your question, mm -hmm. based as as Jimmy mentioned on your pre-specified criteria. Um, and so we were very uh, specific about choosing studies that were very explicit about the two diets that were being compared. Because what we found was that often in, the, in these, in these um, the studies that were being done, they would, for example, only tell you about the carbohydrate content of the diet. They wouldn't tell you what the fat content was or what the protein content mm -hmm. was. And so it became very difficult, um, you know, um, it becomes very difficult then to understand, are you comparing a well-defined diet with another well-defined diet yeah. in order to actually be, reach a, a, a sort of a valid answer? And so... By, by going through this process, we then eventually included 19 specific studies, um, which are clinical trials, and um, it in, uh, the studies included um, in, in the end 3,209 overweight and obese people. So these were people that had been put either on the balanced diet or on the low carbohydrate right. diet, as per our definitions, and then had followed these diets over a period of up to two years. Wow. So um, these, are, these um, you know, because these are experimental conditions, it's very difficult to put people on, onto these diets for, for very long periods of time, right. like for 10 or 20 or 30 years. I mean, people just aren't, they don't function in those kind of um, environments, um, you know, those kind of experimental conditions for that long. Right. So the longest trial that we did find was two years. Um, and what we really found then at the end was that when people follow, um, you know, the carbo low carbohydrate diet versus the balanced diet, the weight loss at the end, there isn't a difference. The people... No that, difference. No difference. So um, what we also made sure was that the energy content, so the kilojoules or the calories is mm -hmm. what people um, you know, talk about when they right. talk about energy, that that was matched in the two diets. Because it's very important when you're looking at an outcome like weight loss that you make sure that you, that you reckon in the effect of, of energy because fundamentally... Um, energy in versus energy out is what drives right. weight change. Right. So it's very important that you consider that um, when you when you are trying to answer this question. And so what we found that for up to two years, um, the weight loss that was achieved on either of these diets was not any different. Both diets were effective in that they mm -hmm. the people lost weight, but this weight loss wasn't any different. Okay. So basically, what you're saying is, we need to make sure when comparing diets that the calories or kilojoules are the same because if you're on a low carbohydrate diet the calories or kilojoules intake might be less than if you're on a balanced diet. Yeah so that's one one um, one way of looking at this question mm -hmm. I mean there's been a lot of speculation that it doesn't matter what the kilojoule content is you know um, that you know by reducing your carbohydrates you there's got, it's got some other mechanism by okay. which you can lose weight and this has been tested and tested in the literature but it just always comes down to the fact that it's energy in versus energy, energy out, out and that's the fundamental physiological principle mm -hmm. which drives weight change and that is that was really shown in our in our review as well is that it's not about how the composition of your diet how much carbs and protein and fat or the proportions mm -hmm. of those it's about your total energy content and so that so then when they were matched they resulted in the same weight loss Wow, and that's with over 3,000 participants, you said, over two years. Yes. That sounds like quite, I know you said it's not a long time, but it sounds like quite a long time to me to be monitoring um, these people. So that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, the study also said that low-carb diets could actually be harmful in the long term. Can you elaborate on this for us? 
Well, Jimmy, do you want to start off with that, or should I? Well, you can go. And then okay. I'll follow. So I think that um, what we know up to now is that um, up to two years, mm -hmm. we don't see a difference in weight loss, and we don't see a difference in terms of the cardiovascular markers from our study that we measured, which were blood cholesterol, blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Um, but beyond that, we actually are uncertain what the effects of these diets are. Um, so, you know, there have been a few longer term studies that have been done, um, but we don't have conclusive evidence yet as to what okay. these, these diets do. And, and when, when researchers have followed up large groups of people for long periods of time, um, it, it has been shown that a lower intake of carbohydrates versus a higher intake of carbohydrates um, can have adverse health effects. For example, it has been linked to um, increased death, it has been linked to increased cardiovascular or heart disease. Um, but that said, you know, there's, there's just not enough research at this stage, mm -hmm. so we, we are uncertain. Jimmy, did you have anything to add? Can I just say that, that you know, it, it's really critical when one makes a recommendation mm -hmm. that one looks not only at p potential benefit, for example, weight loss, but that you also consider, you also m make sure that, that what you're trying to recommend is safe. Uh, that is the responsible thing to do. And I'll, I'll give you an example from a totally different field. Uh, in the 1950s and 60s, um, pregnant women who had nausea and vomiting mm -hmm. were put onto something called thalidomide, which was a drug for nausea and vomiting. It worked perfectly uh, for nausea and vomiting. It controlled that, right. those symptoms. However, what subsequently happened is when they gave birth to their children, these children had serious birth defects. Okay, so that's the safety issue. So yeah. one can't look at the one aspect without the other. So, and that's where we get really concerned. You know, mm -hmm. we, we know that perhaps in the short term, the low carb diet helps to re reduce weight, although we found that it's no different from the balanced diet. But we know nothing about the long term effects and we, we are concerned about that.